Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 26 beta 3 released a couple weeks ago and iOS 18.6 beta 3 released a few days ago. But there's even more to talk about since the iOS 26 beta 3 is out what's new video. We'll talk about the latest Apple news as well as some new features and also the overall experience. Not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video on the post page, there's over 19,000 votes and 226 comments. I've got on through all the comments to determine what the overall experience is like for everyone, so be sure to stick around toward the end of the video where I'll read some of your comments as well. Now this past week we had World Emoji Day. Emojipedia showed off the next set of emoji that should release with iOS 26 later this year when ready. This is part of Unicode 17 and many people don't realize that actually Apple doesn't come up with the emoji but rather they're just complying to the Unicode standard. So we have a few different ones we can expect such as a trombone, a treasure chest, distorted face, hairy creature or Bigfoot or Sasquatch, Fight Cloud, Apple Core, Orca, and Ballet Dancers. We may see some additional ones as well, but this is what we can expect so far. Of course, they'll be in Apple style once they're done as well. Now Vimeo has actually brought its app back to the Apple TV after not really updating it for a couple of years. It will run on tvOS 18 or later, and it's a redesigned app that allows for searching, discovering, and watching videos, and Apple even previously had said that some of the Vision Pro videos would be on Vimeo, so maybe they're getting ready for that, or maybe we'll be able to watch spatial video there a little bit more easy, and be able to upload things as well, maybe from our phone. Now, in case you haven't heard already, Apple is suing John Prosser over the way he obtained iOS 26 information and then leaked it. The accusation is pretty serious and definitely not good if all of it is turning out to be true, but I'm more curious about what you have to say about it in the comments below. So I'd love to hear from you on your thoughts with this as well. Now, Tim Cook announced on X some updates to sleep apnea and heart health on Apple Watch. Apple Watch heart health and sleep apnea are now available on supported watches in quite a few new countries. You can see the list here, but basically Argentina, Australia, Ecuador, Indonesia, Moldova, Thailand, Ukraine, Vietnam, and others. Also, Apple has brought the AirPods hearing aid feature to more places around the world as well. Some of the places get the hearing test option, some of them get the hearing aid functionality. So the hearing test option comes to the countries you can see here, from Argentina to Ecuador to Moldova, Palestinian territories, Serbia, Taiwan, and others. However, more countries are gaining the hearing aid functionality with Cyprus, Ecuador, and others. So you can see the list here, and hopefully it's available in your country soon if it's not listed here. Some of the countries have to wait to get this feature because basically the government has to approve it through their different health organizations or within the government itself, whoever's in charge of health for the country. So that's why it takes some time to get those features. Now, if you have Apple News in your country and you're subscribed to News Plus, to go along with World Emoji Day, there's actually an update here. So if we go over to News Plus, scroll down to where we have games, you'll see a new one with an emoji game. This is now available. It says, welcome to emoji game. Solve the puzzle by completing words and phrases with emoji. So that's something that's new and available now. And if you want to check it out, it's available. But again, you have to have news plus more cars are coming to the Apple car key functionality in Apple wallet. According to Apple, we don't have specific dates, but I've been using it for some time with BMW and it works great. Just walk up to your car it unlocks. You don't even need a separate app for it. So you can just unlock from here. You can open the trunk, turn on the climate, turn the alarm on if you need to, and then just lock the car as you walk away, or as you walk away, it locks automatically as it senses your phone is away from it. This is something we've seen in other manufacturers for a while, but quite a few have been slow to adopt it. Cadillac, Chevrolet, GMC, Lucid, Porsche, Rivian, and many others are going to be adding it soon. So hopefully they add that very soon, pretty much to all cars as it's super convenient not to have to carry your keys around with you. Now, as far as other new features, while the upgraded Siri is a ways off, iOS 26 does add some updates that bring Apple intelligence. A user on Reddit showed a notification or Siri suggestion where a flight that was found in his mail actually recommended purchasing an eSIM or turning on roaming for data as they were traveling outside of their regular area. So this may seem invasive to some people, but it's done all on the phone itself and then it just understands that. So we're seeing more and more of that context. 
Also, another user had noticed that the eSIM was actually switching on their own once they were arrived home, as it noticed that and turned off their travel eSIM or work eSIM. So these are great features, both found on Reddit. People were actually seeing this, and I would love to have it do that for me if I had dual SIMs, or if I'm flying overseas, to have it let me know or remind me that I may need to pick up a different SIM card or eSIM. Also in cellular data use, there seems to be a new icon. If we go into settings, then we go into cellular. And if we scroll down to where it says apps only on watch, we have a new icon there. So this is a small update, but something that's updated and it says apps only on the watch and it's tracking their data usage. Now, as far as iPhone 17, we're just a couple months off at this point. And last week we got a look at the colors that could be available. And now it seems that we're getting confirmation that the iPhone 17 Air will in fact be made of titanium. This makes sense since it's super thin, we need to have a strong frame that doesn't bend. And that's true of what we have already with the S25 Edge. This is super strong. I've accidentally left it in my back pocket and it seems to hold that just fine. So with the rigidity of titanium and the overall strength, I don't think it will be an issue for it. But the battery is definitely a concern as we've heard it's only still going to be 2800 milliamp hours. Now that new feature where it sort of monitors power and helps with it may help tremendously, but we don't really know until it's released. But hopefully with the next update, Apple really figures out the battery and makes it last much longer. Now this week, I think many of us were surprised that Apple didn't release iOS 26 public beta one. Typically year over year for the past many years at this point, after iOS 26 beta three was released, we expected iOS 26 beta 3.5 or beta three re-release, and then a public beta maybe a day or two later. That's what they've done for years, but this time around they didn't do that and they delayed it. Supposedly it was supposed to come out last week and then they delayed it maybe due to some issues with it. So I know some people predicted it would come out this coming week. Others have actually said that it would be last week. So supposedly Apple delayed it due to issues though. However, Mark Gurman is now saying we can expect it around the 23rd. So what I would expect is basically on this coming Monday, I would expect Apple to release maybe iOS 26 beta four, maybe with some new features, refinements, or it could be a three re-release, but I would expect beta four and then the public beta maybe around the 23rd, like Mark Gurman is saying. So typically sometime in midweek, we should finally have the public beta one inbound and releasing. So that's something I can't wait for, for all of you to get to try it out if you haven't been trying the betas yet, and hopefully it's much more stable at this point. Of course, iOS 18.6 is still in the works and beta four is possible this week as well. We don't know 100% if that's what they're going to do, but we could have beta four or we could even have a release candidate as it seems much better than we've seen in the past. So probably the best betas we've had so far with iOS 18. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the iOS 18.5 experience since many of us at this point have had it for a couple months. This is the longest in a long time that we haven't had a public release. Many of us expected iOS 18.5.1, but there's still a ton of bugs with iOS 18.5 and I'm hearing from people that wouldn't normally complain about it. So I definitely think we could use iOS 18.6 and iOS 18.6 seems to be the best we've seen in a very long time. So many people were actually using this and commenting on the poll this week, and they say it has great battery. We'll check that more in a moment, but many are saying it's stable, it's buttery smooth according to many of you, and much better than iOS 18.5. This is definitely seemingly ready for a release, other than one bug mentioned in the release notes I went over in the What's New video. It still has one bug that's been there for a long time, and that's the wallpaper dimming bug. If I swipe up here, you'll see it dimmed right there. But if I do that on iOS 26, it looks like it's mostly fixed. So if we swipe up, you'll see it basically stays the same. So maybe they're just ignoring it on iOS 18 since they've fixed it on iOS 26. But overall, iOS 18.6 is super solid and fast, smooth and everything else. So I'm glad to see that and can't wait for that to release as well. Now with the iOS 26 beta three experience, I've been using this over the past couple of weeks. I even went on a trip with it out of the town into New York city, and it was pretty good overall. I did run into an occasional issue. Sometimes when I'd go to turn on the phone, it wouldn't respond. And I just have to press the button a couple times and then it would finally turn on. In fact, right before this video, I ran into the exact same issue on the iPad. So there's an odd bug there where it was a delay and just turning on. 
However, it is improved, but there's still bugs overall. Many have reported better battery life so far, but there's definitely still some lag and unresponsiveness. If I go into music and swipe home, sometimes you'll see some lag. Sometimes just going into settings, you may have seen it lag there a little bit. And there's definitely some issues here. Many more also want more of liquid glass. It isn't really turned down very much with dark mode, but if I turn on light mode, you'll see that it's definitely a little bit different, especially in things such as music. However, not as different as you might expect, depending on what you're looking at. So if we go over an area that's maybe dark, it's more translucent, you can see through it. But if we go over an area that's light, it actually changes and then it's sort of frosted glass. So they'll definitely get this right, I think, probably with the next beta and we'll see that. And you may have seen that lag as I swiped home there as well. So overall it's okay, but there's still some issues. Shortcut actions seem to go blank when you're in the control center. So maybe if we add one here, many are saying when they have actions in the run shortcut area, it will just be blank altogether. Also air tags and other devices using find my are showing in the wrong location. I actually ran into this with my iPad. In fact, I left this on the plane and I never leave anything really anywhere. I left the iPad and when I went to look at it and find my, it looked like it was right with me, even though it wasn't. So finally I used it on a different device. I used it on a MacBook running a public version and it showed properly. So I was able to retrieve it thankfully using the find my features and the lost iPad option and the airline located it. So that was great. I was able to easily retrieve it. It showed my phone number on the display. And if you'd like me to make a separate video about that, let me know in the comments below. There's still a wireless charging issue for many people where they go ahead and plug it in and sometimes it doesn't charge. Other times it does. Sometimes it requires a reboot. So definitely some odd issues, but they've fixed quite a few things as well. But I think the number one issue with this update, other than the bugs that we expect with a beta, is many people want them to go back to maybe the beta one or beta two style of liquid glass. I asked many of you on X about that as well. So I ran the poll on X and threads with 3,914 votes. 39% said they like iOS 26 beta two as far as liquid glass. 29% like the current version. So it seems to be pretty evenly split here. If we take a look at threads, I did the same thing and it seems most people like iOS 26 beta three. So that's a little odd, a thousand votes here, but many people like beta two better than beta one. So we'll probably see this change a little bit with the next beta. And hopefully I know some people want a slider for it. I don't think we'll see that, but hopefully it will be improved. As far as the overall heat, well, this time around, it definitely heats up randomly. When I was traveling, my phone would just get super hot for no reason, but I haven't seen that at all with iOS 18.6 beta three. So right now my iPhone with iOS 26 is quite hot. iOS 18.6 is not. And you can see iOS 26 beta three with iPhone 16 pro max is almost at 97 degrees Fahrenheit. iOS 18.6 on the same phone is at about 89 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely a little bit cooler. Of course they both have the screen on and we're using them, but iOS 26 definitely randomly heats up for no reason. Now, before we talk about performance and battery life, I just wanted to caution you to do not install iOS 26 beta three on your main device, unless you already have. If you have beta one or two, definitely upgrade to beta three. But if you don't already, I would wait for the public beta since iOS 26 public beta one is inbound in just a couple days. So just wait a few days and we'll probably have that release to the public beta testers. As far as performance overall, while I mentioned that a little bit, it's definitely laggy at times. Restarting the device seems to help. ProMotion does seem okay in iOS 26, scrolling up and down. Sometimes it is a little bit slow, but overall it seems to be what you would expect for an early beta. It's okay, but has occasional lag and stutter throughout. Definitely micro stutters, regular stutters, sometimes severe lag, but hopefully the next beta is much better. As far as battery life, well, battery life on iOS 18.6 beta three seems to be really good for most people. Let's go ahead and take a look. Thanks to both who sent in these battery graphs. On the left, we have an iPhone 16 Pro Max with 100% battery health, and this was sent in by Connor. You'll see eight hours and 57 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 40 minutes of screen idle time, and he only used about 70% of his battery or so, since he's at 30%. Abishek has an iPhone 16e with 100% battery health, and used about less than 50% of his battery and had four hours and 27 minutes of screen on time. So overall, very good battery life on iOS 18.6. However, iOS 26 for me isn't that great. It's better than beta two and better than beta two for most people. But if we take a look, 
I'm at 97% battery health with 268 cycles. Just last week I was at 99, it's dropping rapidly and usually stabilizes after a few percentage or so. However, many people said battery is greatly improved over beta 2 compared to beta 3. So beta 2 is really not great for many people, but 82% this time around said battery was better than beta 2. So that's great to hear after one week of use. The first week it wasn't that great, but it seems to have improved greatly. I did run benchmarks on iOS 26 beta 3. Initial benchmarks are not that great and it seems like you have to run it multiple times. But 3,383 for single core, 8,214 for multi-core. So basically what we would expect if I ran it a couple more times after it cooled down, it would bump up and we've seen this before. But it is doing about the same as it did last time when I tested this. As far as the overall experience and what you had to say, let's go ahead and take a look at some of your comments. Cage Bunshin said, iOS 18.6 beta 3, iPhone 16 Pro. Seems like a good stable update to me. Mr. Crypt said, iOS 18.6 beta 3 has performed fantastic at 12 hours of screen on time, consuming 100% of my iPhone 14 Pro. This is the best update ever. Chris Parmer 4983 said, I've been using iOS 18.6 beta 3 on my iPhone 16 Pro. Battery life has been good. The standby battery drain has been great. I easily get all day battery life with moderate use. Heavy use, it is a much different story. I'm looking for a charger before the end of a busy day. I've had the occasional stutter, but nothing major or anything I can replicate. My recurring concern has been a repeated one. I have phone calls drop or fail when I try to make a new call. In multiple occasions, I've had several contacts message me to ask if I'm experiencing any cellular issues. Just random times and still nothing Apple or Verizon will acknowledge as a problem. Unacceptable. And he also notes that it doesn't happen to him on an S25 Ultra. Isaac Mann, 1870, said, iOS 26 Beta 3 has been good. I can't wait for Beta 4 and hopefully a slider to adjust liquid glass. iPhone 13 Pro Max. Dimov Radu 4938 said, I installed iOS 26 Beta 3 on iPhone 14 Pro Max and rolled back to 18.6 Beta 3 after just one day. Lag was incredible, very slow, very hot, battery drained like crazy. I also don't like the overall design that consumes a lot of resources, similar to what Windows Vista did long ago. Hamza Hashmi24 says, I'm using the latest betas on my iPhone 15 Pro Max and M2 iPad Pro and have only had one significant issue. I keep getting notifications saying an AirTag is following me, but when I try to locate it, it says connection lost. I looked onto the map and it's showing dots in neighborhood houses, which could mean that the issue is resulting from AirTags in the area. Also, the AirTag itself appears to move from from house to house on the map. So iOS 18.6 beta 3 seems to be a much needed and polished version of iOS 18 finally. iOS 26 beta 3 is an improvement, but with the weak delay on the public beta, it makes me believe Apple is really getting things right so you can beta test it on your main device with far less issues than the current betas. So I'm hopeful of that. So that's it with iOS 26 beta 3 and iOS 18.6 beta 3. I'm looking forward to beta 4 or the public beta where everything hopefully will be much more stable. Let me know what you think so far of iOS 18.6 or iOS 26 in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.